Good morning. So the theme for this morning is Wrapped in Union. I heard Dr. Machado during a lecture in church history last semester tell us that we will not realize the ways that we have been unionized. <laughs> that perhaps we will not realize the ways that we have been unionized until we have left these walls. Now that our days in the pit and our nights in the pub are no longer, perhaps we will now see all of the ways union has wrapped us and shaped us and changed our lives forever. We are so wrapped in union that we don't even realize it, and that's the goal. The ultimate goal of any institution is to reproduce itself in the lives of its people. The ultimate goal of the church, or any religious community for that matter, is not that we would become worshipers or pew dwellers. The goal of the church is to reincarnate itself in the lives of its people so that we might become the church. So when all of the papers have been written and all of the grades have been submitted, the ultimate goal of a school such as Union is to recreate itself in the lives of its students. It is the hope that we who leave this place marked with the seal will be Union on two feet. We are so wrapped in Union that we don't realize it. We know how to critique the hell out of anything <laughs> and everything. We know how to critically analyze a text, not just the voices in the text, but the voices that are silenced in the text. We know how to reconfigure a space such as this chapel, how to disrupt a service. We know, we know how to push back on anything. And you know that you have been unionized when you even push back on the graduation fees. <laughs> but union is not a perfect institution. But God did not ask her to be. Union is not a perfect community, but it is ours. Union is not perfect, but it is powerful. And I would even argue that it is in the imperfection of our institution that God has invited us to imagine what it should look like. I have not always appreciated this unionizing process. I have found it a bit, I found a bit of the union ways and cultures to be annoying. When I arrived for student orientation in August 2012, Right away, I noticed that students and administrators had this quirky thing that they would do with their fingers while speaking. <laughs> it was almost as if they were thinking through their fingers. And it drove me crazy until, until I realized I was doing the same thing. <laughs> but the ultimate sign that you have been unionized is asking the union question. It is the question that I have heard everyone ask at one time or another, from President Jones to Fred Davey to Dean Wilson to Dean Jenkins, every student and every faculty member. I call it the great union question. And so what does that look like? I have heard this question so much that I would just wait in class for someone to say it and cringe. Most people do it out of habit, but everyone does it ad nauseum. I can't stand it. But the other day I heard myself in a meeting at the church. Someone suggested an idea and I found myself pushing back and complicating the situation and suggesting something that had not been considered in that space. <laughs> and so I started asking the question, and so what does that look like? But if you ask me, what has Union clothed me in? What has Union wrapped me in? I would say it's that very question. 
And so what does it look like? We're not prophetic just because we protest and die in. We're not prophetic just because we speak truth to power and empower others to be truthful. We're not prophetic because we travel to the School of the Americas each year. But what makes us prophetic is the fact that we fight, work, write, study, organize, disrupt, dismantle, pray and cry to bring into being a world that is not yet here. And so what does that look like? <laughs> and although our feet are grounded in the reality of today, our eyes are always fixed on what we do not see. Yes, although black women in these walls appreciated the work of black liberation theology, they realized that the particularity of their experience in the wilderness had not been considered. So when they weren't satisfied with what they saw, they wondered what would it look like to stretch the canon and the conversation to include their voices. And so what does that look like? So after days of students protesting and organizing in the streets of New York and adding our voices to the growing Black Lives Matter movement, we realized that there was not a space for us to debrief for us to process, for us to critique each other, for us to love on each other. And students came together to imagine a place where they could organize and love on each other. They came together and asked the question, so what would that look like? And we saw how AD 30 was transformed into a love hub. And so what does that look like? Wherever we go, wherever we serve, wherever God assigns our hands to do, as we leave this place to pastor in North Carolina to continue to study at Drew and U Chicago, we ought to take that word with us, that question with us into our work bags. And so what does it look like? Always remember the words of Emily Towns, that the story can be told a different way. So what does that look like? Union has pushed us not to simply critique what is, but to imagine what is not yet. To take a classroom and make it a love hub to take the work of black women and give it an endowed chair. And so what does that look like? And now we are the sons and the daughters of God. No, now we are the daughters and the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, the pastors that we will be, the chaplains that we will be, the institutions that we will lead, the communities that we will build, the lives that we will save, the families that we will restore, the books that we will write, the classes that we will teach, the systems that we will disrupt and the empire that we will dismantle. It doth not yet appear. Now we are the daughters and the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. And so, what does that look like? 